Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some items for you. Rounding off the end of June as we go into July. Oh, lots of good stuff. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Casper de Jong's got a blog post looking at how you can apply filters to slicers and the different things that this could potentially open up for you in your reports. The example he uses is that your slicer may have everything under the sun, but depending on how you filtered the rest of your report, maybe you've only looked at February, all the items in the slicer may not be applicable to February. And so applying that filter to the slicer allows you to filter down the slicer items to what's relevant in the actual rest of the report. This makes it easier for your users to understand what's going on and what's available to them. Casper also shows off a cool trick where you can make slicers dependent on each other. In the example that he has, Think of a slicer that's maybe only got two selections, maybe a toggle of some sort, and based on that switch, the value of your other slicers change accordingly. So it's a pretty cool trick. I saw some other blog posts out there as well, highlighting what you can do with this capability. This is new in the June Power BI desktop that came out last month. And so make sure you've updated to the June release and check out what you can do with slicers. Marco Russo has got another blog talking about calculation groups. Last week, I highlighted the fact that he was introducing calculation groups and what it means. This blog post looks at understanding calculation groups and how you can apply those with inside of your measures. This blog post does a great job giving you those examples of how do I create that calculation group? How do I create the items inside of the calculation group? And then how do I actually apply those items within my measures? As mentioned last week, this is available for SQL Server 2019 analysis services, as well as Azure analysis services, and hopefully it will be in Power BI soon-ish. Check out the link down below in the description, along with links for everything in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. We got the June 2019 rollup of Power BI data flows, and there were two big items inside of this. First was the look at enhanced calculation engine. So this is an item that requires premium capacity, but what it does for data flows is it allows the performance of these data flows to be up to 20 times faster when calculating. This is huge. So it's really just an enhanced performance item for Power BI data flows. And if you wanna learn more about that, I've got a link down in the description below for the presentation that happened at Business Application Summit that walks through how this actually works. The other item was about data flow templates. Data flow templates are really just a way that you can quickly create those data flows based on known data sources. So a lot of the templates that are there right now are really targeted towards Dynamics. And so if you're using Dynamics, you can quickly get your data flows in place to work with the data that you need. And I'm sure more templates will come as time progresses. We got the June 2019 feature rollup for Power BI paginated reports. The first item highlighted are the enhanced email subscriptions, which allows you to work with parameters. It's got preview images. There was a lot of good stuff that came out in June for email subscriptions itself. So definitely check that out if you're not familiar with it. There were some admin portal updates specifically for the capacity settings. So allowing you to control some of the memory usage for paginated report usage with inside of your capacity, which can be really useful when you're trying to manage it. On the data source side, the ability to use OAuth authentication with Azure SQL Database, and also the ability to auto-refresh your paginated reports that are deployed with inside of the Power BI service. And lastly, Chris Finland called out that there will be a new update for the Power BI Paginated Report Builder that will be available today to download an update. And what this update brings is the ability to visually connect to your Power BI data sets. So when you wanna to go to connect to your Power BI data set, you'll actually get a GUI where you can select the data set instead of having to go get the XMLA endpoint and bringing that in. So that'll be really cool if you wanna work with existing data sets inside of the Power BI service. Check later today or check tomorrow morning and see if that update is available. Make sure you install it and go to town. Again, links as always down in the description below. All right, this item is huge. The viewer role for the new workspace experience is now in production. 
he may be sitting there going like, eh, okay, what's the big deal with that? This is huge, right? So this opens up so many possibilities. First off, I can actually have read-only workspaces now. This item was missing and the only way you could get the read-only experience was through publishing apps. This also means that folks in the viewer role inside of that workspace will now have row-level security applied to them. So again, the only way to get row-level security to apply was if you published the app and viewed it that way. And also this was one of the last holdouts for people switching from the old workspaces to the new workspaces because the old workspaces had that read-only capability, whereas the new workspaces were missing that. So now that read-only capability is available in the new, we can start moving off of the old. We don't have the auto migration yet, but that's coming. The other thing I teased out of this blog post that I thought was even bigger was that if your workspace is backed by premium capacity, non-pro users will actually be able to go and view content in the workspace without getting prompt for a pro trial request. That's huge, right? So now they can actually interact with workspaces if they're in the member list as a viewer and it's backed by premium, they can actually go into the workspace and look at the content inside of it. That's massive. Before you would have to either share the content out or you would have to publish the app from a report consumption perspective. For large distribution, I still recommend the app experience for that, but for individual or small share things that you wanna maybe interact with and collaborate on, you can now do that if it's backed by premium. I'm gonna have a video later this week really looking at the viewer role and talking about apps versus app workspaces and some things to consider on that front. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. I wanna know, let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.